Hey Kaka fans, it's Dan Whittle here. Apple Music have just released their 100 greatest albums of all time. These lists, you have to take them with a bit of a pinch of salt, but there's some interesting choices on this list. And hey ho, everyone else is talking about it, so I thought I'd do our first ever React video. Not scripted this one, just going to run through it and give my thoughts on the albums, because I spent a lot of my time listening to albums and therefore I can probably give my thoughts on most of them. I'm an Apple Music man myself, got to look at the list and see if Apple Music know what they're talking about. We're just going to run through and I'll offer my thoughts and some alternatives as to what I think could be on the list because I have seen the list and it isn't a surprise to me. We'll make a start. First up here we got Robin with Body Talk. This is a good album actually, 2010. Everybody knows Dancing on My Own but there's actually some other good material on there. I'd say it's a fairly influential album from the 2010s and there's a lot of electro pop from this kind of era. This is probably one of the better examples of it. Led to albums like Carly Rae Jepsen's Emotion, which I think is probably better and maybe more deserving of being on this list than this particular album, but I'm not going to quibble. It's a decent position for it, really. The next up, we've got Hotel California by the Eagles. I mean, Eagles are a singles band. None of their albums are particularly jaw-dropping. This one is held up by the strength of the title track. There's a couple of good tracks on here that aren't Hotel California. Life in the Fast Lane is another good single as well. Other than that, I mean, the last resort, the ending, it's, it's, it's okay. It's just standard rock and roll music, really. It's well played, but I don't think it's in the top 100 albums of all time. Astro World by Travis Scott. It's a good album. I've only listened to it once. I can't say I'm particularly aching to go back into it, but it's a, it's a decent album. It's got lots of features on there. It's quite varied for a trap album. But, I mean, I don't think Travis Scott is the best example of a trap artist. But, I mean, this album, it's okay. Not the 98th best album of all time there. Rage Against the Machine, their first album, which I do think is probably their best album. Probably between that and their second one, Evil Empire. This has got, obviously, a Christmas number one on it, Killing in the Name. It's one of those where there's a lot of rap metal albums from this time. This is one of the better examples of it. It's very focused. They clearly got their political messages in from the start. They set their, their themes out from, from the beginning of their career. It's a shame we only got four albums, really. One of them is a the cover album, but I'd say this is about fairly placed, to be honest. 96 Pure Heroin by Lord, it's a good album. I don't think it's the 96th best album of all time. It's very influential on that indie pop scene, the early to mid 2010s, but is it brilliant? I don't think so. Usher's Confessions, not even the best Usher album. I would say 8701, probably the best Usher album, but this is a good album. It was everywhere back in the mid 2000s. Got some big singles on it. Yeah, Burn, Caught Up. It's a good pop album. 95th best album of all time. No, Untrue by Burial. I'm not really big into my dubstep. I listen to this. It's a little bit different because it, it has more leverage as being a fairly influential album. It's not quite full-blown Skrillex dubstep. It's actually more of a, a UK garage album with kind of these really gloomy synths and, and textures building up in distorted bass lines. It's where the origin of dubstep came from. It's a good album. Would I put it as the 94th best album of all time? I mean, not from my personal perspective, but I can see I can see why lots of people like it, so I don't, I don't disagree with this being quite high. This is a good album, A Seat at the Table by Solange. I'd say it's a very unsung R&B album with some very good tracks on it. I'm very surprised it's quite high up on this list. I don't, I can't, I'm not going to argue with it. It's a good album, a surprise. A Flower Boy, Tyler the Creator. It's a good album. It's not his best album. I put both Eagle and Call Me If You get lost. I'd say they're both better than this. It's better than his early stuff, but is it as focused as something like Eagle, which I think is is a, an outstanding album. Eagle should be here, not Flatwood. Listen Without Prejudice Volume 1. This is an astoundingly surprising pick because George Michael's picks would normally be Faith. Well, I think Faith is the only one that you normally see on these lists. Older and Listen Without Prejudice don't get as much critical acclaim, but I actually think this is his best record. It's a, just a, it's a little bit slower. It's more of a kind of blue eye soul acoustic record. And the songwriting on it is first class. It's just excellent. It's his most sincere offering. He does a cover of They Won't Go When I Go by Stevie Wonder. And I think he actually matches the intimacy of the original, which is 
a really difficult thing to do. I can't praise this album enough. I'm really glad to see that it is there. Some of George Michael's best ballads, Cowboys and Angels, being one of his most jazzy arrangements. It's it's one of his lowest performing singles, but it's one of his greatest songs. And then you've got Freedom 90 on this, which is an all-time great George Michael single, as well as Heal the Pain, Praying for Time. This is a this is a great album. I'd personally put it much higher, but I, that's probably just a personal preference thing. So I'm just glad that it's on the list, really. ACDC, Black and Black, it's a classic. It's got Black and Black on it. It's got Hell's Bells. It's just a great big punch of metal. It's a great starting point for anyone looking to get into hard rock. Yeah, the 90th best album of all time. Yeah, I, I think I about agree with this placement. It's nothing spectacular, but it is a very important album, so to speak. The Fame Monster by Lady Gaga, which is, I think, the special edition of The Fame. So I'm not sure how it's classed as its own separate entry, but it is really good. Alejandro's on this, which is great, uh, video phone. And the big single, Bad Romance, is on this as well. So she was everywhere, 2008, 2009. This is a big pop album. It's a bit short, but I think this is a respectable position, I think. I Put a Spell on You by Nina Simone, great stuff. I often find a lot of their live stuff is a bit better. So it would be difficult to pick a Nina Simone record on this. But she deserves to be in the list, probably higher up than 88th, to be honest, because she's such a powerful figure within 60s, 70s music. I think a lot of her influence is, is kind of missed. But yeah, this is this is a great record. Blue Lines, Massive Attack. An album that I think has dated less well than a lot of other electronic albums that held up as big albums from the time. It's It's got a lot of very sketchy British hip-hop on it in amongst the big tunes like Unfinished Sympathy. Not my favourite of theirs. Mezzanine's much better. I, I, I think I prefer Protection as well. But it's kind of setting out it's stall for the big effect that it had on electronic music in the in the early 90s so you've got to recognize it and mary j blige's my life i don't think this is a particularly great album i wouldn't have it in my top 100 the production on it which is p diddy but probably chucky thompson i think p diddy was more of an executive let's hope so because i don't really want to <laughs> have to admit that p diddy has any talent because he's a piece of shit but this is it's got good beats on it a lot of the songs are interpolated from other songs and there's a cover of You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman on it. There's a, there's all, all Night Long an interpolation from the Mary Jane Girls back in 83, which is a better song than the Mary J. Blige interpolation. So I think this is an album revisiting a lot of things that had gone on in the, in the previous decades. It's It sounds good. Her voice is phenomenal, but I, I just don't think it's the 86th greatest album of all time. And then we have uh, Golden Hour, Casey Musgraves. Not listened to this one, not all the way through. I've heard some of the singles. Country pop isn't really my thing. I don't understand how this is in the top 100, if I'm being quite frank. Pleasant singles wouldn't have it anywhere near the top 1,000. Doggy Style, Snoop Dogg. I don't think it's that great of an album, but it's really, really, really important for G-Funk and West Coast hip-hop. And there are lots of bangers on it, Gin and Juice, What's My Name. It's great from a singles perspective. As an album, I don't think it holds up as well as a lot of hip-hop albums from the early 90s could and do. And we'll probably see a, a few of those later in the list. But, I mean, I would put... I, this is it's got to be on the list purely because of how much of a cultural impact it had and in introducing Snoop Dogg to the masses and becoming a household name ever since, really. So you can't really argue. I just personally don't think it's that great. Patti Smith's Horses, good album. Really, really solid proto-punk album. I enjoy it. I, I think it's about right. Yeah, I can, I, there's not really much more I can I can say about that. It seems a solid solid choice. Maybe maybe some, uh, maybe some a little bit higher up in the list, maybe. Get Rich or Die Try by 50 Cent. Nope. No, why is this on there? It's not a good album. It's got some good singles on it, but... 2003 Hip Hop. I mean, the Black Album by Jay-Z is not on this list, and that's a much, much better record. Victor Vaughan, MF Doom. There's just so much better hip hop from 2003. This just happened to be the most popular. It's a bad choice. After the Gold Rush by Neil Young. It's a good album. It's probably my favourite Neil Young album. It's got Southern Man. It's got Only Love Can Break Your Heart, which was later covered by Saint Etienne. And I can never decide whether I prefer the original or the cover. Great songs all around. The title track itself, After the Gold Rush, is 
really, really strong. I think 81 sounds about right, but I know that there's people that know Neil Young far more than I do that would argue that it should be higher, I would say. Marshall Mathers LP by Eminem, this is too high. It's there based on cultural impact, but I don't think it's as strong as an album as even Doggy Style. It sounds very dated to me. There are some killer tracks on it, and m most of them are singles. I mean, Stan is one of the greatest hip-hop songs of all time, in my opinion, and that, it, that's on this record. I just don't think that the album flows as well as a lot of other hip-hop tracks, and it, his personality of being against the world is at the forefront of this record, and it just gets a bit exhausting to listen to. I like Eminem, but I don't think he has any outstanding albums from start to finish. They're very patchy for me. This is one of uh, this is one of them shouldn't be on the list for me. Norman Fucking Rockwell by Lana Del Rey. This is a really good album. I'd say it's the strongest, but I really, really dig the album that she put out last year. Did you know there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? This one up until that point was probably my favourite. The Jack Antonov production. It's just bigger than her previous albums, more introspective. And I think she'd really found her feet as a songwriter here. So I, ca I can't really argue with that other than maybe to say that I would maybe replace it with her latest record. Uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. I'm not going to argue with that. 78th greatest album of all time. It's got killer tracks on it. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. It's got, of course, Candle in the Wind. It's got the opening track, Love Lies Bleeding, Funeral for a Friend. It's got the awful Jamaican jerk-off on it, though, which, yeah, I'm not sure about that, but I, I can't argue with this being 78th. Like a Prayer by Madonna. Always an album that I would much, much prefer had we got the original plan, which I think Prince was going to do a duet on Like a Prayer, not Love Song. Love Song is a bit throwaway for me, and the version of Like a Prayer that we never heard with Prince on, on guitar all over it. You can only hear snippets um, of the guitar that he played for her in the release version. I always lament what this album could have been. It's a strong effort, though. I, I think a ray of light maybe Madonna's greatest album, but this is definitely her best 80s album anyway, so I'm not going to argue too much with it being 77th. Um, Verano Sinti by Bad Bunny, no, no. If you like the same Latin trap song played for an hour and 20 minutes, then fine. But if you like variety and other things, then this shouldn't even be in the top 2,000. That's a terrible... Uh, Super Duper Fly by Missy Elliott is an album I haven't actually listened to in full, but I do like some of the singles, uh, Can't Stop the Rain. It's, yeah, it's a good album. I'm not sure that this is the best alternative hip-hop of the late 90s. I'm not sure. And even if you compare it to, like, because uh, Timberland's production is all over this, if you compare it to albums by, say, Genuine or even Aaliyah's 2001 record, the self-titled one, I, I don't think it's... Missy's work, best work or, or Timberland's best work on production. So I'm not sure I, I agree with this one. The Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails, best Nine Inch Nails album, I'd say. It's close, though. I like With Teeth. Pretty Little Hate Machine is, is, of course, a classic as well. I'm not going to argue too much about this. It, this is a, a classic album. It's got Closer on it and Hurt, which was, of course, later covered by Johnny Cash. So it's an important record in terms of establishing the Nine Inch Nails name. It's a very textured and deep album. It's a heavy listen. Not one that I go back to often, but it is good. Aja by uh, Stevie Dan. It's a good album. It's really, really good. Produ Production-wise, it's, it's excellent. Guitars are phenomenal. It's got some of their best tracks on it. Josie, Peg, Deacon Blues I really like as well. Is it my favourite Stevie Dan album? I'd, I'd say Pretzel Logic or maybe Countdown to Ecstasy. 73rd best album of all time. Do you know what? I think this is a pretty fair placement, to be honest. SOS by Scissor. Nope. Very bloated. Album thinks it's more varied than it is. It's not great. The The best song, song on it is probably Kill Bill, the single. Again, like Bad Bunny, this should not be in the top 100 albums of all time. This is just them picking a recent album because they can. Trans Europe Express by Kraftwerk is, is very good. Early electronic music. It's important because even you had the likes of David Bowie making transitions in his sound to become more like Kraftwerk and what they were building at this stage in their career. They've gone from being just a generic kind of kraut rock band to being an, ele uh, an electronic act very early. So we're talking early 70s, before synth pop, before new wave, before that all began. This is this is a really, really impressive record. It should be higher. Straight Out of Compton by NWA. Again, it's like Doggy Style. 
it's not actually that great of an album when you go back to it because other artists did it better in subsequent years. But for the pure shock value and announcing themselves on the main stage, this is a classic. I don't, I, I don't think I can argue with it being placed in 70. I don't. Uh, Master of Puppets by Metallica at 69. Nope. Be, simply because Ride the Lightning is so much better as an album. And there's a lack of metal in this list from what I saw ahead. I might be wrong, but this is one of the highest charting metal entries. And, and if, you, if you're asking me if, if this is the greatest metal album ever, it, it's not. Ride the Lightning is better for one, but I mean, where's Paranoid by Black Sabbath? Even other artists could have a shout for being in this. Deftones, White Pony, or Pantera's Cowboys from Hell. If you want to look at progressive metal, you've got Tools Anima or something like that. This just seems like a very, oh, what's a really popular metal album? We'll put this on the list. It's not It's not as good. It's a very good album. Sound like I don't like it. It is a really good album, but it's just not upper echelon for me. Is This It by The Strokes? A really strong album. I'm not going to argue against this being put in 68th place. I didn't like The Strokes at the time, but I've gone back to this record and it is, it is really good. It's concise, it's fun, it's layered, it's intricate, it's well played, it's striking and distinguished in its sound. It's good. 68th, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. A Dummy by Porter's Head, uh, yeah, I'm not going to argue with that being placed at 67. It's a great trip-hop album with um, some excellent vocals and some really, really atmospheric songs on it. Glory Box, Numb, and then you've got Sour Times. It's just, it's a good album. I'm not, I don't think it's any better than 67th. Uh, the Queen is Dead by The Smiths is probably the best Smiths album. I, I'm not going to argue with, with this one. Got a play out of me last year when The Queen did die uh, and it felt felt relevant. So I, I guess you can you can chalk that up to some longevity points there. It's uh, it's a good record. Three Feet High and Rising by De La Soul is one of the best early hip hop albums. You listen, I listen to a lot of late 80s hip hop and it sounds a little bit basic in a lot of places. And this album isn't, it, it's a great album to listen to from 1989 where you can actually hear the origin of what we know as modern hip hop in this, as opposed to rudimentary beats with an MC over it. This is some, trying to be something more. And yeah, I, I think this is well placed. 65th sounds like a good place. Erica Badu's Baduism. I speak Neo Soul fan. This is not one of my favorites. I do really like this record and I'm glad to see it placed on this list, but I don't even think it's as good as Mama's Gun, her next record. And I know that there's some other Neo Soul on this list, so I'm not completely distraught that this is its only representation. It's a good album. I, I like Erica Badu. But there's something about this album that's never really clicked for me as much as uh, her other records or records by people like Maxwell or D'Angelo, for instance. Jimi Hendrix Experience, are you experienced? Not the best Jimi Hendrix record that I would say Electric Ladyland is probably the best of his three lifetime releases. It's not a million miles of difference between them all. This one is a good album. I just, from, from personal taste, I would just take the uh, the second one. That's the only, uh, that, but yeah, I mean, you've got to have some Jimi Hendrix. I'm surprised it's not higher because of how, how much it inspired guitar-based music, especially going into the early 70s. But it is what it is. It's here. All Eyes on Me by Tupac. Not a great album. It's very long, very bloated, and it doesn't even have the best version of California Love on it. It's got a weird remix as opposed to the single version. It's just, it's an average. I wouldn't have it in the top 100, top 200. It wouldn't even be in the top 500. For My Real N Words, probably the best Tupac record for me. I do really value him as a lyricist, but there, there isn't a single Tupac record that I listen to and say, this is a statement. They all feel quite meandering and like hip hop hadn't quite found its feet. It had, of course, because there were better albums than this higher up in the list. Uh, Love Deluxe by Sade is, that's a big surprise that it's high up. I personally would put this higher than 61. I think it's one of the greatest sort of 90s R&B records that you can listen to. It sounds immaculate. The production's really dense and atmospheric and her voice is, is wonderful. This should be higher. But given the fact that it's got the recognition in the first place, I'm happy that it's uh, 61. Velvet Underground and Nico is a classic, one of my favourite 60s records. What can I say that hasn't been said about this record? It still sounds great today. When you put it up against a lot of 60s records, it sounds a lot more forward thinking. They 
had an idea of what they wanted to create as a concept and they, they executed it very well and used Nico well on, on the tracks as well. Her voice um, really complements what Lou Reed was doing. Yeah, I think it should be higher than 60. AM by Arctic Monkeys. No, I used to really like this album, but as, I, as the years go by, this shouldn't be in the top 100. If you're going to put Arctic Monkeys in there, it's their first record. Whatever you say, I am, that's not, I'm not. That is their best record. It's their most impactful. And without it, I don't think we'd get the others. And yeah, I think they're sliding down into parody territory quite quickly. And this was arguably the start of that, where they switched away from chaotic garage rock and tried to slow things down. And I do like a lot of the songs on, on this. The single Do I Want to Know, for instance, is is really great and it was everywhere and it is still one of the last great rock singles but does this album hold up no not for me next up we have oasis oasis what's the story morning glory shouldn't be anywhere near this list i do, do think it's their best album and from a songwriting perspective i actually quite like some of the songs i always used to like some might say listen to it recently on lossless with headphones it's mixed like shit it's like somebody put it in logic or whatever music program and, and just put, yeah, make this sound like it's coming from a, a top 40 stereo. Take all the bass out and just fill the high frequencies up. And it just sounds like a bag of shit. It's not a good album. Wouldn't be anywhere near the top thousand for me. But it is the best Oasis record. It's got their best songs on it, which is not saying much. Voodoo by D'Angelo. This record is probably about 60 times better than Oasis's record. It should be higher up than 57. This is a seminal release. It's, it's not one that I go back to all that often because it's quite long and quite an intimidating album, but the performances on it are excellent. D'Angelo's doing this starting of his weird sort of mumbling where it's not really about the lyrics, but it is. It's also about all the syncopation. And, and it's just a great record. This is Neo Soul at its best. It's very influential. But, I mean, if... If we're only putting one D'Angelo album on this list, for me, Black Messiah is better, but that was never going to be on this list. And next up, 56, uh, Disintegration by The Cure. Not my favourite Cure record, probably Pornography is. This is a really, really good record. I think the reason I prefer Pornography is it's more concise. This one goes on a little bit long for my liking, but I, I'm not going to hold that against it. It's a really strong record. I'm surprised it's not higher than 56 because, yeah, The Cure make good records especially in this in this period in the 80s in the 80s they were kind of in their pomp and this is the climax of uh, their 80s output and it's it's great if you haven't heard it listen to it anti by rihanna average album it's all right it's actually the best album that rihanna put out i stopped listening to her albums i, I got into her when she was very first out and she had music of the sun a girl like me i actually listened to those records um very early on but I quickly realised that she was more of a singles artist and I didn't really ever like the albums. This one's the last one she put out back in 2016 and it's good. It's a lot stronger than her other material. She's going into a more alternative R&B. It wants to be a bit more introspective at, and talk about things politically. But, I mean, is it in the top 100? No, absolutely not. Especially when you consider the alternative R&B albums like Awaken My Love by Childish Gambino on, on this list. Much, much better than this. I love Supreme by John Coltrane is, I mean, it's, it's imperious. It's, it's a great record. I think it should be higher than 54. John Coltrane, one of the best saxophonists of all time, tragic figure, didn't make a lot of material in his short lifetime, but the stuff that he did is, is great. And this is a classic, should be higher than 54. Exile on, on Main Street, Rolling Stones, again, another classic. I'm not going to argue with it at 53. I just think that there are better Stones records, Let It Bleed. I think Beggar's Banquet, my personal favourite is Some Girls, but I think that may be a bit too pop and maybe a bit too disco in places for that to be the critical choice. But I, I do like this album. I'm surprised it's not higher than 53rd, to be honest, because it does get a, a lot of praise. It's quite long. It's a double record. It's a classic. Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses is their best album. It's it's one of the biggest condensed rock experience, hard rock experiences that you can have. Uh, songwriting is great, performances are great. Axel Rose's voice is has never been better and will never sound better than this. Slash's guitar playing is melodic and edgy, and 
it's just got everything you want from that kind of record. And they lost focus immediately after this, and it all became strange live EPs and cover albums and double albums like Use Your Illusion. And this is Guns N' Roses doing what they should have done a lot more. Just a 45-minute banger of a record. Should be higher than 52. Sign of the Times by Prince. I mean, 51. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're telling me that there are 50... 50 albums better than this. I can only think of maybe one, and that's Songs of the Key of Life. And even then, that's arguable. This is the greatest double record probably ever made. And the impact that it had on pop music going into the 90s cannot be understated. Every track is magnificent. It's got the best closer to any album on it, which is Adore. I don't think that this is has been thought through very well because there aren't many things that are better than this. This is one of the greatest things that's ever been put out in music. And to be called the 51st greatest album is probably an insult. How's of Love by Kate Bush. Is it better than Sign of the Times? Hell no. Is it a good album? Yeah. So I'm not going to argue with it being uh, the 50th best album. Is it Kate Bush's best record? No. The Dreaming is, is a better album than this. But it is. I mean, this is a good album. It's got some of the best pop singles on it, obviously. Uh, Running Up That Hill, How's of Love cloud busting but it's got that second half which is just kind of deep and folky and just a wash for the soul really great record joshua tree by you two fuck off if, if this is better than sign of the times it's just not uh it's a good record 49th best album of all time absolutely not i think it would probably make my top 100 i put it around about 50 places lower than it currently is though paul's boutique by the beastie boys again no, way too. it's way too low. It's a good record, and it's a pioneering record in, in the amount of samples that it uses, but is it better than Sign of the Times? <laughs> no, it's just not better than Sign of the Times. And the Beastie Boys, the two remaining ones, they, I'm think, I think they would probably agree with me. This is ludicrous for Take Care by Drake to be at 47. I, I'm not going to say, is it better than Sign of the Times anymore, because that's a redundant question. Is this better than all the albums that we've discussed so far? It's, it's certainly not better than most of them. It's a good album. Again, I'd say it's probably Drake's best album. But it's got Marvin's Room on it, which is one of my favourites. But is it a top 50 of all time record? No, no, this, this, this pick just reeks of trying to be relevant by picking current artists. Terrible. No, Exodus by Bob Marley and the Wailers. Again, a strong record. Probably my favourite by him. It introduces the, a lot of the guitar tones and the, the kind of almost electronic elements that dub would begin to form from. So it is sonically quite an important album. The second half of it has got Three Little Birds, One Love People Get Ready, Waiting in Vain. So it's got some of his most recognisable songs. I can't argue with this at 46. Homogenic by Björk. What an album this is. I, I, yeah, I, I can actually say this may be higher. I think this is Bjork's best record. Some would say best, but team. I think this is a bit more unhinged, and that's why I love it. She is kind of like a, it's almost like a breakup album, but done with these gorgeous chamber pop ballads that are that have been absolutely ravaged by digital samples and percussion. And it sounds incredible all these years later. What a record this is. Inner Visions by Stevie Wonder. I'd say this is about right. I know loads of people love Inner, Vis Inner Visions. It's the, the best of the classic period. I don't. I think it's my least favourite, depending on when you classify Stevie Wonder's classic period, because some people include Music of My Mind, and some people include uh, Journey Through the Secret Life of Plants. I don't include Journey Through the Secret Life of Plants. It's a good album, but it's not on the level of his actual classic period. But of the big records, I don't think... For me, this is the one I return to the least but it does have some incredible, incredible work on it. So it is easily in the top 50 best albums of all time. I'd put all of them on the list. That's not going to happen. But I do think one of the others does rightly appear higher up. Talking Heads Remaining Light should be way higher than 43rd. It's the best Talking Heads record. It's one of the best records of the 80s. It's so different because it's it's you've got all these post-punk sounds, but then all these strange polyrhythms and... African beats and they bring in funk lines and I don't think any of the, the, the songs actually even change chords. They're all just one chord vamps. 
but it's amazing. Every song once in a lifetime. You've got houses in motion. They're all just really, really funky, funky songs. And the only song I don't really like is the last track, The Overload. I think it maybe it is a little bit too morose for me. But other than that, this album should should be way higher than 43. Control, Janet Jackson. Control is a good record, a strong record. Is it the best? No. I would have I would have the Velvet Rope in here in 42nd place or uh, Rhythm Nation. I'd have Control would probably be my top 100. I would This probably would make the 90s. And then in this place, I would probably have Velvet Rope. Janet Jackson is great. and I love her so much. And this album, it is probably her most highly rated album. I don't think it's her best, though. I, I, it's in her top three albums, but it's not It's not her best. It, it's one of those where, unless you are really specifically in the mood for some very nasty no pun intended, well, okay, pun intended, sounding 80s pop, then this is the one for you. But if you want a little bit more variety and grown-up songwriting from Janet, then then you're probably going to prefer either Period or Velvet Rope. But, I mean, the Jam and Lewis production on this was so amazing and established them as, after leaving Morris Day and the time, that they were going to branch out on their own and actually shape pop music in the 90s. So it is it's important to recognise what this album did bring to the table. 41 is A Crumb and I by Outkast, which is a weird one because like, I, I know this is their most highly rated record, but it's the one that I just don't vibe with the, the most. Their first two records, I, I prefer to this. I prefer this to Idle Wild, the last record. Even Love Below and Speaker Box for its overblown double album, Insanity. The, this, for me, I mean, I can I, it's a great album. 41st Place is probably about right. It's just my personal tastes. I, I prefer other outcast stuff. And I don't know why, because I've listened to this album multiple, multiple times and it should. It's got a track with George Clinton on it. I should love it. But I just can't. I don't know why. I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You. Not the best Aretha Franklin album, but probably the one that everyone's going to go for. I'd go for some from maybe from the early 70s. I'd either go for Young Gifted in Black or Live at Fillmore West as a live album over, over this. But there's no doubt that Aretha Franklin was an incredible singer and made really, really good records that are mostly all worth checking out. So I, I'm not going to argue with this being in the top 40. Illmatic by Nas, this is criminal. This should be way higher than 39. It's one of the greatest albums ever made. It's probably my favourite hip-hop album. And that used to fluctuate, but the more I go back to it and the more, the more it consolidates it, just the, those boom back productions, the performance as an MC by Nas himself, the storytelling, it's just wonderful. Every track is is memorable and you, you will end up revisiting them all. It, it's just a, a behemoth of a record should be way higher than 39, especially given some of the stuff that's coming. Tapestry by Carole King, wonderful record. I'm surprised it's in the top 40, but I mean, it, whoever put this on there has got taste. It's a, good, it's a good record. It's got a lot of songs that would become, well, if they weren't already, standards. Some of the songs I think had already been made standards by other artists, but this was her coming together to record her own songs. And it the, just the, the tenderness of the performances is, is just wonderful. Great record. 37, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers. This should be higher. I mean, you, logic dictates you put it at 36 and maybe not at 37 just for the just for the symmetry. But, I mean, I, I personally place this in my top 20. This is one of the most fun and ridiculous hip-hop albums of all time. And it's one of those that helps as, it, I mean, as somebody growing up in an era where hip-hop was was all around me and becoming more and more popular. This was one of those that you listen to and you understand why hip-hop is so captivating as an art form. This is just wonderful. It should be higher than 37. Beyonce, her self-titled album of 2013, 36 best album of all time. No. I mean, I know Lemonade's higher up on this list. Personally, I think Lemonade is the best record. And I think 36 would be about where I'd rank Lemonade. My second favourite of hers is actually Renaissance, and then it's probably this. Neither of those two would make the top 100 for me. The Clash, London Calling, 35. I mean, I, that, that, that's a fairly respectable position. I mean, everything's respectable when Sign of the Times is at 51, come on. But I think this should be higher. 
it's one of the best records of the. I mean, it came out in 1980, I think, early 1980, unless it was very late 1979. And the range of songwriting from a punk band, I mean, this is essentially the definitive post-punk record because it covers so much, including dub. It's got pop in there. It's it's catchy, London calling itself, lost in the supermarket. Just a series of slices of, of life from that period told by a, a very authentic set of storytellers who also happen to be very good musicians. You've got Paul Simonon, who was incredible. The top of head on drums, obviously Joe Strummer and Mick Jones as well. What a band, what a band. They, it's a shame they didn't do more. Yeah, this should be higher. It takes a million, nation of millions to hold us back. One of the most impactful hip hop records of all time. I think it's dated a little bit now, but if you, if I ha had to, to place a, a public enemy album in the top 40, which I probably would, because I think they, they, they kind of set the uh, the pace for hip hop in the late eighties. I think this is probably my my favorite of their records. I know some people will pick Fear of a Black Planet over this, but I th I think I think this is my favorite. And of course, it's got Security of the First World, which Madonna would then turn into Justify My Love. So it it has a whole spectrum of of scope in its influence. Really, A Kid A by Radiohead is. I think you know what I think this is about the right place for it, 33. I know that OK Computer is higher up on the list, and I, I think that's probably deserved. I think I prefer In Rainbows to this album, but I'm quite happy to have it in 33rd place. Ready to Die by Notorious B.I.G. Again, not an album I've ever really vibed with, but I recognise why it's so important. Is it better than Nas's Illmatic? Definitely not. So it shouldn't be here uh, so high, but it probably should be in the top 100, so I'm not going to quibble too much on that one. Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette. This should be in the in the nineties, I think. Not just because it was recorded in the nineties, but it should be placed in the nineties because I think it's very overrated. There's some really good singles on it. But if you return to it as an album, it's not that great. There's been there's much better albums in the mid nineties. If you want to compare them just apples for apples, then Fiona Apple made better music than this and continues to to this day. So I would put something like Fiona Apple's first album or When the Porn, something like that. I'd take that 100% over this. I do see why this is on there because it was really popular at the time, but it wasn't massively influential. Alanis Morissette didn't really go on to have a, the career that everybody would expect after numbers this high with this debut record, but it's just overrated now for me. When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Again, similar to Alanis Morissette, I think it's a little bit overrated. I actually prefer her newer record, Hit Me Hard and Soft. I think that's a better, more consistent record than this. But I do think that some of the high points on this, uh, especially towards the beginning, uh, the first half of the album is strong. 30th best album of all time, no chance. Absolutely no chance. Low End Theory, Tribe Called Quest, should be higher than 29. Just like Nars' Illmatic, it's one of the best hip-hop albums ever. I have a tendency towards jazz rap because I listen to a lot of jazz and funk music, so the, the instrumentation of it is important to my overall appreciation, and this hits all the boxes for me. Wonderful, Q-Tip's amazing, Five Dogs amazing, production is fantastic, they've even got like Ron Carter playing bass on it. Wonderful record, should be in the top 10. I don't think this is doing enough justice. I put this and I put Illmatic in the top 10. Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd is an album that is always gonna be on this list. I'm actually surprised it's not higher, but I think that's quite encouraging to see because I don't think this is as good a record as everybody says. I do think that its its origins are quite useful in the fundamentals of, of rock and roll. And I think it, especially its iconography. Is there a better album cover out there? I don't think so. Everybody knows what it is. But is it, I mean, Pink Floyd made better music. Animals is better. When You were, uh, Wish You Were Here is better. And At A Push, because the concept itself is so ludicrous, I'd even say The Wall is a better record, but you have to be in the mood for The Wall. This you can put on more often, but I just think that it's one of those where it's just on the list maybe because of how famous it is as opposed to how good it is. I mean, I, if you want, I, they're not that similar, but if you want really textured, complicated, soundscapes in rock and roll something like talk talk with laughing stock or you could you could go for something that's 
more accessible in terms of progressive rock, like Supertramp's Breakfast in America. I think those are probably better records than, than Dark Side of the Moon, but it just seems to be there always has to be a space for this record. Don't get me wrong though, it is a really, really strong recording. I'm not, I'm not saying, it, it's still at least an eight out of 10 for me. It's a, it's a B plus to an A tier record, but it's just not quite as good as the hype makes out to be. Uh, Led Zeppelin 2 is another one like this. I think that Led Zeppelin's studio material is is fine, but I don't I don't really love any of their records. I know that some people would say Led Zeppelin 4 here, again, not for me. I mean, this is where I would say it's it's crazy that Paranoid by Black Sabbath isn't here. They came out the same year, and that's a much much better, much much more forward-thinking record than Led Zeppelin 1 2 3 or 4. Likewise, around this time You've got albums that are, because I think a lot of Led Zeppelin's material is borrowed from blues that they'd heard before, but they didn't really do anything that different with it. I'm much, like, if you're talking late 60s, put some Sly and the Family Stone on this list. Stand is a 10 out of 10 record that's much, much stronger than this from the same year. And yeah, I, again, one of those where they're just putting it on the list because Led Zeppelin's famous, but I don't think... I just don't think, I mean, Whole Lot of Love is a great opening track, one of the best, but does the rest of the album really maintain that con that kind of level? For me, it doesn't. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by Kanye West is next, and 26th position. Again, it's way, 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 way too high. This isn't Kanye's best record. I think 808s and Heartache is aged better than this. I think that like, even Life of Pablo may be a shout for being a better album than this. I personally, though, I think that I'd put his debut, The College Dropout, in, in about 26th place. I think that's an outstanding album, and it, I, it may not be his most technical, because it is just more of a standard hip-hop introductory album. It lacks the experimentation of a record like this, or, or like 808s and Heart, right? but it's just not got the consistency for me. It's got the singles, but it doesn't have the consistency across the track list to be in position number 26. College Dropout, I would I would say you've got an argument there, but not this one. Kind of Blue by Miles Davis should be higher than 25th. This is an amazing album. It's one of those where if you if you want, I, I, I've often used it if somebody's asked me to, to, to DJ at an event. This is great music for setting up and people coming in. It feels classy but it's just intricately played, but that, there's that intimacy. This modal jazz that this, this record is much, much of a part of was actually quite uh, a big change in, in the direction for jazz and made it more listenable on a, on a mass scale. And this is a wonderful record. I don't think it's Miles Davis' best record, but I think this is uh, any list without kind of blue on it is is missing the point, so at least they've got that. The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, Spiders from Mars, David Bowie, probably the big explosive Bowie album. If you want to know what David Bowie is about, then this is the record to listen to. It's not my favorite, but do you know what? I think 24th is about right. I think this is, I'd say it's in my top 25 albums of all time. I think this is the only David Bowie album on the list. I mean, the fact that it hasn't got Station to Station or Low, or, or Hunky Dory or Aladdin Sane on this list is ludicrous. If we're going to have to have a one one appearance from David Bowie, then I'm glad he made the top 25. And this is a, a very, very good example of glam rock done with a with an interesting story, with catchy refrains, memorable guitar lines, a solid band. Mick Ronson's guitar play is, is excellent on this. And David Bowie's voice He's really finding his feet with all these very, uh, with all these varied characters, and the, a great example of theatrical glam rock. So yeah, really happy it's on the list. A discovery by Daft Punk. I mean, this does feel about right in twenty third. I don't think it's the best Daft Punk record. I'd go for Random Access Memories, and I don't even think this is the best example of an album that that, that sounds like this, because I think Justice with their debut album Cross, six years later which is a big time in, in pop music, I guess, but that's a better record than this. But this is one that everybody has a copy of this. It's ubiquitous, and songs like One More Time were big, big, huge hits. The music videos are excellent, and it does have great songs, Digital Love, Aerodynamic, 
something about us being my favorite as well which which is it's a, it's a marvelous record it just goes on a little bit too long for me and i just don't think it's as it's the best example of 2000s french house born to run by bruce springsteen wouldn't be in my top 100 it's a good album top 100 you maybe have an argument that born in the usa because of how big that album was and how much people missed the point that could be in this sort of position i don't know bruce springsteen for me i listen to his albums i'm always a little bit cold i much prefer him as a live artist i do think he's great and on this i mean he's got clarence clemens on saxophone all over it which is great it's the beginnings of stevie van zandt being in the band he contributed some of the guitar work for the first time and it is great I mean, it's got Born to Run on it. Thunder Road is a great track um, to open. Maybe think the album should have been called Thunder Road, but that's neither here nor there for this video. Yeah, I don't. I think this is this is too high. Revolver by the Beatles, twenty first. Yeah, this is about right. It's my favourite Beatles album. I wouldn't have it higher up on the list. I wouldn't have it lower. If you follow the story of the album and pop music, this is one of the first times that a phenomenon had appeared as a as a record that was actually also quite experimental it wasn't just this is what we sound like this is us trying to reach new artistic achievement and yeah i think it i think it's great i don't think it should be any higher than this because there are a couple of clunkers on it but yeah it's about right for me and pet sounds Oh, they've immediately i, I hadn't realized that they put pet, pet sounds one ahead of revolver I think I agree. I think Pet Sounds is one better than Revolver. Because if you listen to them multiple times, as I have, I think this one lives with you that little bit longer. It's just a little bit classier and a little bit more consistent. And and how you can have an album in the top 20 albums of all time that features prominent contributions from Mike Love. I mean, that that is an achievement in itself already, isn't it? Yeah, happy with this one. The Chronic by Dr. Dre. It's the best Dr. Dre record all the 2001 people i hear you and i i still disagree this is a better record and in terms of g-funk and setting the 90s up for that sound and th those images and the culture itself this is a landmark album and it's great you still listen to it it's it can still be funny there's that whole pyramid show skit on it which is which is great nothing like a g thing one of the definitive early 90s uh, singles uh, some Donny Hathaway love on there with Little Ghetto Boy. Wonderful record, and I think this is about fairly placed, so I'd, I'd agree with that. 1989, and this is where I think they made a mistake, because it says Taylor's version. Now, you cannot tell me Swifties, because I'm going to get some hate for this, but Swifties, can you honestly tell me that the Taylor's version, sonically, is better than the original? Because it isn't. I think the problem with re-recording albums, and Taylor Swift isn't the first person to have done this. Prince tried it in the, in the late 90s. Of course I'm going to say that, but it's true. Taylor Swift is re-recording albums. She put this out last year. I think that the whole thing with the album is you capture a moment in time. When you re-record that, the essence is gone, and that's very much what's happened with this. It's just a recreation of it, and it doesn't sound the same because it's not capturing the same energy levels. So it's, this, is, this is a D-tier album. This is, I mean... I said about um, Oasis earlier, I think that I can understand why that's around 100. I wouldn't have it in my top 1,000. This wouldn't even be in my top 10,000. It's a D-tier album that is released for fans of Taylor Swift and nobody else. If the album had been 1989, just the original version, I still wouldn't have it anywhere near my top 100. But it's not Taylor Swift's best, best record for anybody who's... Who, who just thinks I'm a Taylor Swift hater, Folklore is probably the best record. Would that be 18th in the top 100 albums of all time? Hell no. no. None of her albums deserve to be in the top 100. She's just not got that much musical talent. She's a good lyricist, but this is a joke. This is, this is embar That's an embarrassing choice. That really is an embarrassing choice. Even Midnight's is better than this. I mean, that's a good album again. I don't think she has. Uh, Reputation is actively a bad album, but I don't think she's got anything that's particularly awful other than that one. But none of them, none of them would make anywhere near my in the top five hundred. If it, if it, in in my opinion, if you have a serious list, this is nowhere near the conversation. Nowhere near it. 
what's going on and, and to be this is this is almost like insulting to Marvin Gaye for, for his album What's Going On, one of the greatest records ever, ever to to be next to Taylor Swift. It's like you could you could try your hardest to live your life and you're only going to be one better than Taylor, Taylor Swift with one of the best pieces of art that's ever been made. It's absolutely ridiculous. This should be in the top 10. This is way too low. But, I mean, you, you could argue that in 17th place, Here My Dear or Let's Get It On or I Want You, one of his other records should be in this place and this should be top three, top five at the very least. 17th, is a, that's a travesty, especially when you consider what, it's put ne- what they put next to it. Blue by Joni Mitchell is not my favourite Joni Mitchell record, but I'm happy that it's in the top 20. It's a good record. I would go for something from her jazzy era, maybe Hajira, maybe Hissing Up the Summer Lawns. But I'm I'm pretty happy that Joni Mitchell's get, got some recognition in this list. This is a really good album. I think the, the reason why I don't listen to this so much is because you've got the track of River, which is almost like an interpolation of Jingle Bells. So it feels a bit odd listening to it when it's not Christmas for me. But, I mean, I can't hold that against the record. The song is still exceptional. It's got A Case of You on it, which is one of the best tracks ever recorded. Who am I to argue with this? 16th place, I I think it's about right. I don't think I'd have it in the top 10, but top 20, yeah. 21 by Adele wouldn't be anywhere near this list. This is another Taylor Swift pick, where they have literally just put it on this list to score points with big audiences. So Swifties and modern pop fans want to see modern pop artists represented and this is not a good record I I, again just like the Taylor Swift record and with the scissor record earlier this is this is just recency bias I the singles are good and I don't I I really don't hate Adele and I think she's an incredibly talented singer and the the, as I've mentioned on on this channel before my my issue with Adele is that her music doesn't sound like her so she makes this morose depressing music that's i mean if you're comparing it to something like nine inch nails or elliot smith it's not depressing so it's in this in that mid mid section where it's just sad music for for people who don't know why they're sad rolling the deep's good someone like you is a is a magnificent song but as an album it's not a pleasant listening experience it doesn't flow very well it's a c-tier album at best wouldn't be in my top thousand Highway 61 Revisited is the best Bob Dylan album, I can say that. This deserves to be here. I probably would have it lower myself, but hey, it's not my list. Highway 61 Revisited has what I want from a Bob Dylan album. It's got more rock instrumentation. I don't like his earlier folky stuff because I'm not big into folk, so he's introduced blues into his sound, the album before this one. This one is a, a continuation of that, and... I mean, Like a Rolling Stone is a great album opener. The 11 Minutes at Desolation Row at, the, at the, the end finishes the album wonderfully well. I'm not the biggest big Bob Dylan fan, and I'm probably not the person to go to for an opinion on Bob Dylan because I think that Slow Train Running in 79 when he went through his Christian blues rock period, that's probably my favourite Bob Dylan. But if I had to think objectively, this is probably the greatest thing that, that he, he put out. I, I really don't like Blonde on Blonde, it's too long. The double album so yeah for me 14th highway 61 revisited is a is a good placing the blueprint by jay-z 13th best album of all time i like this album but it's better than stillmatic the 2001 release from nas that they were going head and head against but this isn't even better than the illmatic and i think this album even says about how good the Ill, the illmatic was in 94 and that was seven years prior to this this album's fine it's not the best Jay-Z record. I would argue that the Black Album's better than this. And I think this is better than the, the Marshall Mavis LP. It's kind of around the, around the same time. Eminem's also on this. So they, they're kind of, they're quite similar in that in that regard. Maybe not as, uh, maybe not in terms of lyrical flow, but the, I think this is a, it's a really good gangster rap album. Would it be my, it would be my, it would have been my top 100, maybe. It might make the 90s, but. 13th you're kidding me absolutely kidding me this is this is hurting okay computer by radiohead not in the top 10 quite surprised on that i would i think it's about right i think about 12th is about right again i think in rainbows is my personal favorite do i think in rainbows is better than this no okay computer is a really good album
I'm surprised it's not in the top 10. It changed the, the game in the late 90s for rock music, certainly. Whether or not it's in the top 10 doesn't really matter. It's, it's still, it's pretty high up and it's a great, great record. Rumours by Fleetwood Mac, again, another great record. Again, surprised it's not in the top 10. It's on the verge and I can't really deny that it belongs a high placing. Obviously, viewing Fleetwood Mac albums is like viewing prestige television shows. So Rumours is your Sopranos, but for me, Tusk is The Wire. So this is the straightforward storytelling done well, whereas Tusk is completely crazy and all over the place, but actually comes together to tell a slightly more enjoyable story. But Tusk isn't going to be in the ele ranked 11th best album of all time, whereas Rumours is likely to because more people will have heard it. So happy with that. It's a great album, not taking anything away from that. Lemonade by Beyonce is too high. I don't think it should be in the top 10. As I mentioned earlier, it should probably be where her self-titled is. Uh, it's a really, really good record with appearances from the likes of Kendrick Lamar and Jack White. This is where we got the origin of Becky with the good hair. Uh, it's, it's the start of Beyonce as an artist for me. Some people would argue it was the album before. This is where she really struck out and had statements to make about herself and her world. For me, it's great. Is it in the top 10? No, that's too high recency bias again. Nirvana's Nevermind. Surprised it's not in utero, especially because uh, the passing of Steve Albini. This is a difficult one because do I, is it a top 10? Probably because of the, the sheer impact it had on pop culture at the time. And when you listen to it, the songs are impeccable. It does flow really well. It's got great singles. The production's excellent, energetic. I just think in utero is a little bit better. Captured who Nirvana were more than this record does. I think the thing about Nevermind is it captures where the public was in 1991, whereas In Utero captured where Nirvana were in 93. So I think it's a better record, but I'm not going to argue with this being in the top 10. Back to Black, Amy Winehouse. I am actually making a Slammin' 7 video on Amy Winehouse, which should be up early next week. This is the best album she did. And I may have even previously said on the on, on this channel that I think Frank is better, but I don't think so. This this album is one of those that every time you listen to it, it gets better. And it's just a delectable set of songs that just, they're just timeless. It makes you sad and melancholy because of Amy Winehouse's story and the, the amount of emotion she puts into this record. But the production from Salam Raimi and Mark Ronson is just so good. The album's infectiously it's kind of upbeat with all the horns and the arrangement of it is ju it just gets you on your feet so it's a it's a it's a real clash of emotions when you listen to this I, I yeah do you know what i think it deserves to be in the top 10 i think it is a really strong album and it gets stronger every time you listen to it so i can't can't say anything about that good kid mad city i love this record i really do but it's not to pimp a butterfly and it's not anywhere near as good. I would have this, I think this would probably make my top 100. I think it would be somewhere around 70, 60, 70. And then To Pimp a Butterfly would be in this position. I'd actually have To Pimp a Butterfly maybe in the top five. This album's really good. It's really cinematic and there's some great singles on it. It introduced us to Kendrick. There's a Drake cameo on it. And the, he's saying a lot about alcoholism and his life uh, growing up in California and his adolescence but it's just not as crazy and as bombastic as what To Pimp a Butterfly is and yeah I, I'm happy that this is here and I'm glad that it's got representation but I think it's too high and I think Kendrick's done better. I'd, I'd even maybe argue Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers the more I listen to that record I think it's on a par with Good Kid Mad City. And Untitled Unmastered, I also think is better. Just saying. Moving on. This isn't in the top five. The people that made this list should be put in prison for not having this in the top five. How you can argue that albums are better than this is so difficult because it's got so many classics. Every song, there's no skips. It's two discs and it's just a journey. It's a journey that I can't, very few people would have a reason to, to get off the bus from because it's just, it's feel good. It's ethereal, such impressive textures and layering and the songwriting. I, this, this is pop music at its very best. Even Paul Simon in 1975 
thanks Stevie Wonder for taking two years to make this record because if he had released it the year before, Paul Simon wouldn't have won a Grammy. And he said that in the speech. This is the the peak, the epitome of pop music and how you can say there were five records better than this. I just don't, I just can't comprehend. I, this is This is not, in the top five, and that is shameful of Apple Music. Like I am considering joining Spotify. That's not going to happen. Top five now, Blonde, Frank Ocean. If you'd asked me 48 hours ago, I would have said this doesn't deserve to be in the top 100. I've listened to it several times, and it was only last night that I listened to it and actually get it. I really like it. As he dives into his own... Uh, his own demons and his own lack of self-control and how he knows it's all a cycle and how he get depressed again. It's, it's really good. Top five? No. No. I think Channel Orange is better. I would put this in the top 100. I would put Channel Orange in the top 100. And if you allow it, Nostalgia Ultra. I think both of those are better than this. But this one is. I think, can I argue with that? It's not as good as Sign of the Times, though. So Sign of the Times should be fourth. And I, I, would, I would argue that... But then... You can't really not have this in the top 10 because it's such a tour de force. Every note and every song. Same with Songs of the Key of Life, Purple Rain, well, three if you include Sign of Times, but they are singular moments of genius in pop music that can't be rivaled. I, I just don't see... I mean, I'm happy with this in fourth. I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I talk about Prince Enough on this channel. In third position, Abbey, Abbey Road by The Beatles. I actually think I can't argue with this. It's a really good album. I, better than Revolver, though. And is Revolver good enough to be in the top 10? No. I, I, I'd have this in my top 100. I'd have it lower down than Revolver, maybe 50th, that kind of thing. It's a really good album, really influential, lots of really good songs on it. It sounds amazing. The Beatles were on top form. Everyone's praised this album to death. I just think this is a little bit too high for me this is way too high a thriller by michael jackson it's like they have never listened to it it's like they've looked at the cover and gone oh well that's the second greatest album of all time have they listened to it it's got the girl is mine on it with paul mccartney which is a dud none of these albums can have dud tracks if you're talking the hundred best records they can't have a track like the girl is mine by paul mccartney because it's not very good and the rest of the album, I mean, it's not as good as Off the Wall. It's not as good as Triumph by the Jacksons. And Janet Jackson made better records than this. This is not as good as Rhythm Nation. This is not as good as Velvet Rope. Arguably not as good as, as Janet, period. It's better than Bad. I'd argue if you if you cut some of the fluff out of Dangerous, I think you've probably got a better, better condensed nine tracks than this. I just don't think Thread is that good of a record. It's okay. Fine, but it's only here because it because people bought it, and people know what that album cover looks like. I, I Billy Jean is a wonderful song, but when you I mean even Purple Rain in four, in fourth position, you compare them side by side, and, and Purple Rain is better on every track than this one. It wins like nine nil. It's not close. Top two hundred, and I'd put I, I would I would have Off the Wall in my top seventy. You know, second place, that's crazy. Number one, Miss Education of Lion Hill. Worthy winner? Kind of. It's a good album. It's an eight year album. Her voice is great. A lot of variety between R&B tracks, hip hop tracks. I think the, the segues in the album, they ruin the flow a little bit and it is quite long. Is it as good as Neo Soul albums like Maxwell's Urban Hang Suite? No, it's not as good as that. Is it as good as Voodoo? No, it's not. I love Lion Hill. And I wish you'd make more music because this is the, I think that's it. That's it, isn't it? This album is number one because we all miss Lauren Hill and we wish she'd, she'd make more music. So hopefully by putting this at number one, lights a fire underneath her and we get more Lauren Hill material. But is this the best album ever? I've listened to it several times. It's really not. I mean, it's the best album of 1998. That's all I've got. There's so many missing on this list. There's just too many. I mean, where's Grace by Jeff Buckley? Where's Violator by Depeche Mode? Um, Prince's Parade um, should have been on here. 1999 should have been on here. Off the Wall by Michael Jackson should have been on here. Uh, Ride the Lightning by Metallica should have been here. Where's the self-titled album from The Cars? 
station to station and then there's more Joni Mitchell stuff that, that, that's, that's better there's more Rolling Stones albums as I say Let It Bleed where's that Fleetwood Mac have got better uh, have got better albums that should be Tusk is it should be should be here their their self titled 1975 record could be here uh, Sonada Matreya aka Territory Derby where's introducing the Hardline uh, I would also argue that um, and it will never make the list because nobody likes it but neither Fish nor Flesh is second album. Uh, it should be it should be up here too. There's so many. There's so many they've missed, and I just don't understand it. Like uh, something like Grace astounds me because that is a it's such a big record that everybody loves. It just it just seems like it's an arbitrary list. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. There's no explanation as to why albums have scored where they have, who voted on this, and I know I said at the start we shouldn't take these seriously. And I, 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 and I do honestly think that they, the, the bringing out these lists is always good because they open up the dialogue about good albums, which is not something that I ever tire of. But, oh, come on. Just, just get better picks on this. Or at least explain why. I think you limit yourself doing a, doing a hundred albums because a hundred, there's only a hundred. They've all got to be 10 out of 10. And there's so many on this list that are just eight. But, I mean, out of all the reviews ever, it's just not there, is it? Anyway, I could go on for hours and hours about these records. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I talking shit? Are Apple Music talking shit? Is anybody talking shit? Is anybody making sense? Anyway, I'm going to go make another video because I've got Slam and 7 coming out for Amy Winehouse next week. Should be out on Bank Holiday Monday. Fingers crossed. Toes crossed. You know. All that kind of shit. I'll do my best to get it out. In the meantime, you've got one job to do, and that is stay funky. And don't listen to Taylor Swift's new Taylor's version because it's terrible.